Embracing new beginnings. How to create a healthy retirement with Nancy Schwartz. Are you ready to transition into retirement? Nancy Schwartz is a healthy retirement expert with 40 years of corporate experience and the wisdom to show you the way. In this interview on the Wellness Driven Life Show, Nancy talks about the importance of health in retirement and how transitions can be an opportunity to reveal our insight and wisdom. Learn about the science-based tools that will allow you to live in health, age gracefully, and reach your longevity goals. Tune in now to become a wise and healthy retiree. Welcome to the Wellness Driven Life Show, where you're about to go on a wellness-driven ride. Hello, everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about our guest. I'm kind of excited to have her here today because we don't always talk retirement here, and it's such a subject that needs to be discussed. Nancy Schwartz, founder and principal of Envision Healthy Retirement, has a successful corporate leadership background with experience in retained research and client partnership at Corn Ferry. She has also founded professional dance companies and a not-for-profit dance studio, emphasizing the importance of balance and inclusion. With a passion for personal growth and enrichment, Nancy has graduated from various health and lifestyle programs and is dedicated to helping her clients achieve their envisioned life. Please help me welcome Nancy Schwartz. Thank you, April. I'm so excited to be here and uh, share our conversation with your audience. Really, uh, I've been looking forward to this uh, moment in time. Uh, my pleasure. I'm so glad that you're looking forward to it because so am I. It's, it's really an engaging conversation we're going to have that I think will really open some opportunities and some ideas to a, a different area of guests that we have, people who are looking into retirement, who are already in retirement. So thank you for being on the Wellness Driven Life Show, Nancy. Thank Let's you. give the audience a little bit more background about you. So um, I guess you'd like to hear a little bit about my journey of how the heck did I land in this seat talking to you today? Would that be true? <laughs> sure. Yes, of course. Okay, so as you alluded and graciously introduced me, um, I was that 40 year uh, global partner in a retained executive search firm. And um, I worked many, many, many hours as many of our colleagues have uh, worked. And I really, there came a point in time and I had my, my career in decades and I was very, very lucky. I love what I, I did and I loved my clients and um, it was very interesting. I worked across finance and also uh, health, the health and science space uh, in either global multinationals or in private equity. So quite a span in uh, placement of leadership roles in the C-suite. So um, also in the science side as well. But when it came time for me to think about retirement. And really, I, I never even thought about retirement. But what happened to me was the fact that I started having these questions. I remember one night uh, in New York when I was working uh, in a preparation of a, a very big project for a client. It was very late because I used to work uh, in different time zones as well. I had this thought out of my mind that just said, Nancy, who are you exactly? And by the way, can you continue this type of lifestyle for the next 10 years. And I really, at, by accident, not planned, I wish I could say it was highly strategic, but it was not. 
but I really had this, these 10 year chunks that I was, I was working through. And what I realized after a lot of soul searching and trying to figure out what is it that I want to do? I came up empty. I'm like, I love what I do, but I really feel that I could be more expansive and also impact more people. But mm -hmm. what is that? You know, what is that exactly that I, I could do? So I tried a lot of different routes. Um, I explored what I thought I would love, failed miserably. <sighs> failure, 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 failure. Um, I tried different courses. I went into different countries. I thought, well, if I do this or that. And ultimately, it really boiled down to what are you good at, Nancy? What's your skill set? and leadership, and certainly uh, understanding and the love of the pursuit of science and technology. We're living, and April, you're in this business, so you know extremely well about this, that, you know, gosh, we are living at the best of times because the science and the technology are changing so rapidly. And so to be on that cutting edge is just incredible. So. I wanted to find a company that could consult me how to exit from this career into mm -hmm. healthy retirement. And when I started looking at myself and I really considered I'm a very athletic person and I'm pretty strenuous in terms of my diet um, for years because my mother grew up in California. She, she didn't understand fast food. And as a child, I was incensed how come my mother does not have Twinkies and Hostess cupcakes and everybody else on the block has them? And what is wrong with my mother? Well, <laughs> 40, 50, 60 years later, I am thank you, mom from heaven. You were so right, but we didn't know that she was right. Right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's my journey. I went around to educate myself and you know, it's the, the typical uh, entrepreneur journey Need something and you have to build it yourself. So yeah. that's what I've done with Envision Healthy Retirement. It's a legacy company, which is very different than how I was operating in the public company. And then I created a smaller company out of that. So, um, yeah, where there's a need, there's always a will. Nancy, you have such an incredible background with corporate in that world and, and extensive too with the mm. science and the financial and all mm. of the things. So you really can bring so much to the table, all of this different uh, understanding of different buckets that we all need. Mm -hmm. Now, when you started into retirement, what were some of the connotations that come up with the word retirement? Yeah. Right. So that that's such a great question. And I'm glad you're asking that, April. I think if if you uh, do market surveys uh, from the big brands like the McKinsey's who've poured millions of dollars into this, or if you do your own personal, which is which I followed up and I I called all my friends who were partners who had retired, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, what's your process? Could I learn from them? And globally, retirement is not excluding culture or, or country. It's a global sentiment that this mm -hmm. word retirement is hated. It is despised. Okay. It is the interpretation in any language is the end. And I actually mm -hmm. thought, God, I'm at the end of my life. Like, what am I going to do with myself? And this sentiment was... Um, echoed by other partners and other colleagues and friends and family. And, you know, I, I really went around high level people, low level people, middle level people, just moms, volunteers, all different types of job types. That was the sentiment. And I thought, whoa, wait a second here. And so uh, in addition, April, to um, being on this beautiful podcast, I'm on a quest to find a better word than retirement. But right now, mm. we don't have one, but I know that in your lifetime, you and I will find something that's even better. And it, it, it is almost, I, I have clients who I cannot even use that word retirement. They literally like do not use that. 
or sometimes people call it the R word or the next chapter. And they're mm -hmm. like, mm. and I, I was just giving a presentation uh, yes, uh, last week and an, one of the first um, in person, because in here getting in person things are, are, are just a little more dicey than, than going on online, which I fully embrace and I love this technology. But it was interesting when I was talking about this, you literally could feel the room freeze over. Hmm. And and the participants were those in and around retirement. So it yeah. is, um, and they they laugh. They had this nervous laugh, like mm, we don't know the uh, another name. But what I said is, I built this model, and I want to share it with you and your audience. Is that despite what we're told, and despite what society tells us to think, I don't believe this. And I'm disrupting this, and I'm so happy that you had have me on to share this. But I built this model. It's an inverse triangle. And what I talk about is, okay, you and I, April, we went to school. You have children. They're going to go to school. We all follow the same model, right? Mm -hmm. A couple of decades of, of, and then we maybe go to college, or we go to technical school, or maybe we get a, a more uh, extensive business degree or technical degree. But at some point in our life, we enter the workforce and we stay maybe in a company for and more. You and I are high performers. We would be tracked up to and moving around the company or we may be recruited like what I used to do out. I have a better opportunity for you. Or you and I may say, hey, hmm, this company has me doing this, but my sweet spot is over here. I want to try this. Here's an early stage company. I really could make an impact and provide value, not only for the world, but also I'll be paid accordingly, right? Mm -hmm. But that's 40 years. And then we headbutt the next stage, this next chapter in our life. And if you think about that inverse triangle, it really opens up. And I feel that it is the most expansive time in your life, absolutely the most gorgeous time to learn, to be curious, to play, to really finally find. And I had a I had a CEO uh, the other the other day, and I'll quote him. I can't mention his name, but I will quote him. And here's what he said, April. He said, and he says it way better than I would ever say it. He said, for years, Nancy, I've been leading in, in an incredible leader. He's fabulous. His company's fabulous. They were acquired, and. He's been leading, he said, with his brain and with his head. Mm. And he's performed. The company's performed. He's fantastic. He's been offered a much higher leadership role in this company. But he said, Nance, you know what I want to do? I want to change. And I want to leave from my heart. Mm. And guess what, Nance? I found this thing. Found this thing, which he describes to me. And... I was literally, I'm in my office right now talking to you. And I was literally like, well, I don't think this Ikea desk would support me dancing on top of this desk, but I was truly dancing in my heart for him. Uh, just so excited that here, this is, he is at that expansive space now where he knows he can provide value, impact. He understands all the analytics. He understands the politics and he understands how important this vision of this company is to really impact more people than he's already impacted in his life. Mm. And so that's really a description of um, how I believe we should be looking at this. And it's quite contrary to that shutdown close. Right. Um, and, 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 and by thinking this mentally, you're left behind. And so it is very important to break through that wall uh, to, to experience that being. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about that, the energies yeah. that are surrounding the word yeah. retirement, the feeling of retirement. What are those energies? Why? And I, I couldn't agree with you more. I love the visualization you said of that reverted triangle where it's we are more expansive, more creative. It's a beautiful time because we've lived so much life already. Right. And, and so we have wisdom that we didn't have before. Right. So 
yeah, let's go back to those energies. What are those energies that are surrounding it and why? Yeah. So there's a lot of fear because it's unknown. So, but they don't talk about this either. So um, again, I'm, 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 I'm kind of stepping on the dark side here, but let, let me, let me step over here and, and share with you that I believe retirement and whatever word that you use that it's, you feel appropriate, that's appropriate for you is a, a situation in life where it's a tremendous transformation, just like you went from school to a career mm. or a career to maybe another company or to another role or um, an added uh, something that you had to lead that you've never led before. Um, or perhaps you're doing a volunteer a, a role, I don't know, for a hospital or something. Well, you've never done that before. But <clears throat> that's something that you want to do, but it's a skill set. You have to live and learn. And so that's really what I feel that's, that's important. So there's, you know, when it's an unknown, it's like, mm, mm. I'm not sure, April, mm, am I going to step over there? Mm, not sure. So I say step over with gusto, right? There's grief, a lot of grief. Yeah. Why is there grief? Why is there sadness? Why is there, um, there's disgust. Um, yeah. And, and I, it was interesting on my podcast, I interviewed this incredible woman who's a psychotherapist and she and I came to the conclusion, uh, she's the expert. I am not a psychotherapist, no way, <laughs> but sh her expertise confirmed that. And she said that it's really, and I believe this too, you're building a new identity. And yes. so there's so much, just like you would build a new identity going from kindergarten to first grade, or you're going from high school to your first days in college, meeting all these people or technical school or, or specialized training, or you're going into the military or whatever the situation is, right? Mm -hmm. So Except it's a lot more difficult as an adult. Yes. Because of all of our belief systems. Correct. Correct. And so when you talk about belief systems, <clears throat> I think this is so important. Um, when you are a high performer, at least I'll speak for myself and then I'll give you some examples. When you are a really high performer, you push yourself, you push, and particularly as a leader, right? You push yourself and you push yourself and you push yourself. And that comes with a lot of, um, anger and um, really self beratement like why can't I get to this piece whatever this piece is mm -hmm. um, because you are expected to lead this group of people it also comes with a belief system that your identity okay so let's just say you're a salesperson or you're that scientist or you're that teacher or that police person or whatever emergency worker, whatever you are, you are that. And so I would say, if you would ask me, if you knew me when I was in my executive search hat role, that's the lane I stayed in. April, I did not know mm. podcast. I did not know you. I did not know the Wellness Driven Life Show. I had not a clue. You talk retained executive search. I could talk you around in corners. My vision was so limited. I was in not even one lane, but in a very subsect sector yeah. of this one yeah. lane. Yeah. Yeah. I think absolutely. I think so many of us get there because right. when you are familiar with doing something day in and day out for years, for years and years and years, it's very difficult to have an open mind to anything else because you simply haven't, you haven't experienced anything otherwise. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, Nancy, we're going to move into our first commercial. This is a great conversation. I'm excited to learn a little bit more of your thought processes on retirement. When we get back, stay tuned. Kim Jacobs consulting.com. You know, people say opportunity knocks on every door. Right. No. Opportunity stands by silently waiting for you to recognize it. 
So I want you to recognize that this is a time for you. This is an incredible time to have your own talk show. It establishes a level of credibility. Yes. And by being exposed to people on a regular basis, it allows you to strategically begin to impact and attract your audience. She can take you in a place in yourself that you can't go by yourself. So go to Kim Jacobs consulting.com. That's Kim Jacobs consulting.com. Did I say Kim Jacobs consulting.com? Yes, you did. Very good. Make sure you go there and sign up for the coaching. And we're looking forward to working with you. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Now, Nancy, we have talked a lot about just the beginnings of retirement, the word, the emotions that it stems up in people when we say it. And we've talked about how we would love to create a different word, or maybe, Nancy, it's just a shift in perception and how we feel and perceive about the word. If we can start shifting the definition of it and what it is, just like your reverse triangle, then people can be excited about that next journey in life. And so, Nancy, you are the, the, the health expert too in this. Tell me a little bit about why health yeah. is important when we talk about our journey into retirement. Yeah. That, yeah, thank you for that question, April. I think that that is just so paramount in our uh, vitality, in our longevity, um, in our aging process. And very selfishly, I'll talk about myself. You know, very selfishly, I didn't really think much about my health. I drove, I drove myself really, really, really hard to perform because that's what my job was, and yeah. that's what everybody's job is whether you're a mom whether you're a dad whether you're an aunt whether you're that wonderful school teacher the nurse wh whoever you are this is what you do but at the end of the day you have to look at and this, these are some of the questions that i was facing i'm like man i didn't realize how stressed i was I was mm. chronically stressed for decades. I had no clue. In those days, we didn't talk about it. It was just like, oh, April, you have another hour. Oh, you don't need sleep. You can go get that thing to wherever it has to go to. And we need the analysis like, oh, yes, in 20 minutes. Okay, per perfect. So yeah. health is so important. And I, I cannot say this enough. In and around retirement, we start experiencing first-time health issues, significant things. Mm -hmm. eye, eye lessening of vision, hearing loss. Uh, maybe our joints aren't what they used to be. Uh, maybe we're slightly overweight. Maybe we have brain fog. I mean, the list is endless. But yeah. now is the opportunity to get a hold of your health. And why, why, who cares? Why, why do we care about this? Because believe it or not, we humans, no matter how destructive we are on ourselves are actually living longer. And so when you look at the financial models and it's all about the risk and actuarial tables and you know, you look at their planning, they usually tell you, oh, April, hmm, congratulations, you're planning about retirement. What are you gonna do next year? Or, April, let's just stretch this really far. What are you going to do in three years? And how are we going to come up with a budget for you? Blah, blah, blah. Well, if you think about the amazing scientists that are at work today, David Sinclair is stating amazing things, and Mark Hyman, and I mean, the list is endless. Dr. Peter Atia, you know, just everybody is just so amazing. Andrew Huberman, who does these podcasts, and it's just, I mean, I could give you a list this long of just, I, I just, there's not enough time in the day to listen to everybody who are just groundbreaking. It's groundbreaking work. Yeah. But what we know is that it is so important to harness not only your health, but your health in optimal peak performance. Why? Because we are living 30, 40 years longer Mm. And remember that 
as, as David Sinclair at Harvard said, you know, aging is not something that just happens to us. It is a disease. And so I'm reading Dr. Atiyah's book right now, Outlive. And what he says, and he's a big, he's, he's crazy, but crazy good, just wonderful. I mean, it's just like, oh my God, this guy's insane. I can't, I can't imagine I working for him. And he would be like, oh my gosh, but he's absolutely right. He says that if you want to live or if you happen to live, you're, you know, it's all up to upstairs. We all know this, but if it, you are so lucky, you have to have the training, the nutrition, the sleep to have even more health now hmm. so that you can suspend that arch 30 years, 40 years down the road. Right. So these guys- Quality of life. Exactly. That's what I always talk about. Start hmm. now for the quality and longevity. And Atia talks hmm. about you know, what are you going to do in your marginal decade? That means your decade, the last year alive. And if you look at any of the statistics now, it's horrible to say, but in, in America and around the world, most people are living with two chronic diseases in their last decade of life. Yeah. So to your point, is that quality of life? No. Yeah. I and our know. choices that we make now affect us later on in the future. Exactly. And I want to skip that. I, I call it a flyby. I want to fly over that, right? So I yes. want to skip that part. And really these guys, I mean, I think that Sinclair is probably, I think he's projecting he wants to be 150. I think Hyman and those guys are at like 120. Um, I'm at 125. I've always said that since I was a little girl. I have no clue why. But that's where I'm going. So, um, so it, it, it is a, a conversion to a lifestyle yeah. of rigorous metrics where you are wanting exactly what you're saying. It's the quality. I don't want to be alive in an institution. I mm. want to be alive in life. Yeah. And wow, we could go into a lot of different things here. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a a comment that came in, I'll just bring it in real quick. Yes. CJ said, that is very true. We need to take care of our health and maintain it. That will help people to live longer. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when we start talking about our, our, our quality of life or, you know, going into retirement and then living longer, mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking an extensive amount of time of what we're used to. And even, you know, biblically or you know, many, many different historical artifacts talk about people living a very long time. And so getting back to that, as we continue to live longer now, what does that mean for retirement? Because to me, it's like, you have to figure out something else. So Nancy, I'm curious, does that mean going into entrepreneurship? You know, when we start talking about doing something that we love and enjoy. And now we have all this wisdom that we are able to share and provide to the world. What does that look like? Yeah. So, so that's a, that's a great question. And I, I'll approach it from two angles. One is the acquisition of wisdom and intuition, which is exactly what you allude to just because we've been here for a really long time. Right. But the second thing is what the hell are we going to do with it? Right. Yeah. So having it, who cares? but if we can share it. So what are the businesses or volunteer roles or situations or guidance or mentorship or serving on a board? This is the beauty. And this is what I talk about in this expansive space. So how you, April, when, when you are my age, how will you define what you envision, what you plan, and then what you live in this time period may or may not be similar to what I do, but it's true to you and right. it's true to me. So for instance, I've built this company, but it's a legacy company as we discuss. So this is true to me. But as I, as I talked about this other CEO, it's a volunteer role, but that's true to him, right? So it's building that and being able to contribute. And I think it's all about community 
It's all about helping another person. And it's all about, um, you know, I, I just feel such joy when I'm able to really support a client through their journey. And I'm sure with your, your programs, you must feel the same way. You know, it's just, um, it's one human supporting another. I, I just can't think of a, a better place to be. Yeah. Nancy, I'm curious too, with your, this is what you do. I'm, I would think that you've done a lot of research on uh, people who have really welcome, they have a different understanding on elderly and, yeah. and they, they highlight it and they celebrate it in different ways than we do here in the United States traditionally. Mm -hmm. Per that research, per se, do do you see a different way of utilizing that time and how we can support through community action? So, um, so let me just make sure I understand your question. So, you're saying that um, through activism we can support our more elder generation, or are you saying that? No, just a different way of of going about how we view our elderly. What what we do together with them. You know, we support retirement here in, in most of the world, I would say. Mm -hmm. But if we look at different, let's say even if, if you go in a, in a tribal sense, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. people, you know, view our lifespans and, yeah. and the different times and journeys that we have within life. And I'm I'm twisting my tongue too. No, uh, I think I get to. I think I'll jump into the deep end and see what I can do here. <laughs> so I, I think, I think, but please correct me if I am as I'm going along. Um, I think you're talking about how society views the elder. And so I do believe in America that there is this connotation of they're pushed aside. And I know that's terrible, what I'm saying. Uh, but the, and I'm just doing a study, and let me let me say this: I'm just doing a study on 90-year-olds, and I can't wait to have the, more meetings to gather more information: how they mm -hmm. feel, what's going on, how are things going, what questions, you know. So that. But now let's go back to your question. If you look at the blue zones, which you were talking about that, around the world, yes. you were talking about Sardinia or Japan, or I know my, my mother's family comes from Europe. Um, there is such an honor and a reverence or in your tribal yeah. setting where if I got into trouble, which is all the time, I would be going to this tribal leader and asking, wow, April, man, yeah, I'm twisted around a pipe. What could you suggest in your wisdom and in your incredible intuition? Which way should I skinny? You know, so right, think, it's a, it's revered in a different way. It's totally, it, it's admired. It's you go to them for stories, for insight, and yeah. And teaching. I love that you brought up the blue zones, Nancy, because mm -hmm. I, it's something that I wanted to say, but I wasn't quite sure if that, you know, we wanted to fall along the lines, but you're correct. Those blue zones are testament to, those are the pockets where people are, are aging longer, more gracefully. They, they are healthy. Right. And, and so let me just go back to your tribal thing. And I just say it's teaching and reverence. I think that yeah. that's, I, 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 those words came up for me while you were talking about that. And then in the blue zones, I, th I think we can really comment on the fact that it's various systems working together. So we have just what you said, there's the acceptance of the elder knowledge that really is uh, viewed as something very special for the community. There's the sense of community, you know, there's no loneliness there, mm -hmm. right? That's an epidemic with the US Surgeon General. It spans all of our population base, but most importantly, it affects in and around retirement and the elder sector. Um, the blue zone, they keep moving. It's daily contiguous movement. Yeah. Now, they don't go to the gym. They live their life. Yeah, right? 
What about nutrition? I call it fuel. How do they fuel themselves? Mm -hmm. Well, in their particular case, if you talk from ground up, agriculture is very, very different. So there's not any of these farming issues that we're hearing and is organic really organic? And there's all these, these uh, things uh, Dr. Hyman is doing in the government to really change how we source our products. But if you look at the blue zones, it's really um, farm to table, truly yeah. farm to table. And there's no such thing as overeating, um, but it's really, as, as you alluded to earlier, really high quality of nutrients, hmm. plant-based mostly. Um, so there's a real, and then they sleep, uh, they, they're in the circadian rhythm, they get up with the sun and they go to bed uh, with, you know, the sunset. So there's so many, the human body is so amazing. Um, and it is built extremely simple, simply, but yeah, we just listen to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We need to listen to it and we need to honor it. Um, because all our systems are aligned till we decide to throw a wrench in all of that and cause disease. Right. Nancy, I, I love this conversation and so much of what I've heard, and we're jumping into some really great tips for people on, on how to navigate living in a better way. Those blue zone, um, when we have done so much of the science behind that and the studies behind that gives so much insight. So what I'm hearing is community, mm -hmm. uh, farm to table, fresh foods, mm -hmm. just like you talked about earlier, how your mom didn't buy the Twinkies and the soda pops and, the candy, her. and you're like, <laughs> why do I not get this? And everybody else has that. I was in a very similar, although we didn't have everything perfect, but it was very rare that we had sodas or anything like that in our homes, but other friends did. I, like, I went to those homes. I went to them. I sourced out those sodas. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, Halloween it. was like an important time because it was the only time we got candy for goodness sakes. Yeah. Uh, but you're, you, you know, the, the zones where we have the community, we have the fresher foods, we have daily movement. Those are all essential mm -hmm. in really keeping ourselves, you know, in a, in a well-balanced way. Right. I, I mean, I'm just looking at the title of your show and it's, it is wellness driven. It's a lifestyle that's wellness driven, except yeah. they don't think about it that way. They, in the blue zones, this is just life as, as we live it. Right. But we yeah. can learn so much from how they're living. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we'll move into another commercial. And then when we get back, I want to talk about some of the biggest challenges people are facing in retirement. So okay. stay tuned. Bella Grace Skincare. It's more than skincare. It's your shortcut to a more youthful, healthy, and beautiful you. Step one, cleanse with the Enzyme Collagen Cleanser. Gently exfoliates and removes dead skin cells, brightens and evens out skin tones, repairs damage caused by environmental stressors, protects skin's barrier function. Use daily for clean, smooth, glowing skin. Experience the Bella Grace Enzyme Collagen Cleanser for a refreshing start and a radiant finish. Step two, treat with the Dewy Serum. Deeply hydrates and locks in moisture. Protects from free radical damage. Targets multiple signs of aging. Boosts microcirculation. Revealing a youthful, radiant, dewy complexion. Dewy Serum goes beyond ordinary skincare, leading you to a realm of glowing, rejuvenated beauty. Step three replenish with the Collagen Plumping Moisturizer. Reduces fine lines and wrinkles. Deeply hydrates. Boosts collagen production. Firms and smooths the skin. Experience an intense surge of moisture. 
that leaves your skin feeling supple and soft to the touch. Celebrate your skin and elevate your beauty with Bella Gray Skin Care. can learn more about Bella Grace in the description below. And back to Nancy, we're talking about retirement. And so let's just say we are stepping into that next phase. What are some of the biggest challenges that people are facing right off the bat? So I think um, cost cost is something that continues. Everything's not a free ride in retirement. Uh, although I, I'd love to see that, but that that's not type of uh, uh, society that we live in here in America. So there's really needs to be a thought of including healthcare costs. And I think it's such an underestimated mm. topic and nobody talks about it. For instance, in this um, conversation that I had uh, last week, I had several participants absolutely shocked. What do you mean we have to pay for Medicare? Because they just turned and they suddenly got this bill that was like substantial. So people don't talk about that. Mm. Um, so healthcare Lack of costs, knowledge. I'm sorry? Lack of knowledge in that. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And making sure that you have the right coverage you. So I always encourage people working with a, a licensed professional because the rules are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. um, I took over a power of attorney of someone and while it didn't impact her initially, um, she neglected to uh, check the little box that said, yes, please pay my subscriptions, prescriptions. Well, at the time, she wasn't really taking anything. But then at, toward the end, we had pills from Bristol-Myers Squibb. One pill was $500. So, I mean, you know, we all know cost of drugs. We all know that. And so yeah. that's not a workable equation. I don't care if you're a trillionaire. It's not a workable situation. So I would really consider asking the, the questions from, from various professionals. When you think about Fidelity just released uh, in 2022, the average cost of health care for a retired couple, 65 plus, was for a lifetime, $315,000. Now, if you're a solopreneur, you cut that in half. We have a lot of solo retirees as well. But let me assure you, that doesn't include your Medicare costs your life, your long-term care, mm -hmm. your uh, gap insurance, your supplement, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of blah, blah, blah all in between that. Also, most important is what about those experimental things? And I know, April, you're all up on this, but stem cell treatments. This is not approved here in the, in, uh, by the FDA. So mm -hmm. people are going to Panama or to Japan or to to harvest this, which is wonderful. Uh, they're finding that these things are really working. Wonderful for people who can utilize this. But who pays for that? That's out of pocket, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of surprises that occur. So I encourage people to start exploring what these costs are on the one side and really be very clear about your budget on the other side uh, because most people's budget, we, we talk about, actually go down in retirement because after the whole travel and there's different cycles of, of retirement and after the travel around the world and you see seen anything, it goes down. But I would suggest inflation, cost of living increases, medical costs go the opposite way. So they go up. Um, be very careful with that analysis. Hire a professional to make sure that you have check the right boxes for your situation. Everybody's situation is different, right? Yeah. How much time do you feel that people would need to, to, to give themselves time and educating themselves prior to going into retirement on all of these things that you're talking about? 
Okay, well, that's the big question from the financial side of the house. And they say, please uh, start thinking about this in your 40s, preferably late 30s, uh, to acquire, you know, the wealth piece. And I would say the same on, on, on my side to really educate yourself because the regulations change state by state is different, you know, not just, you know, every, every you know, taxes. I mean, these are all things that impact, right, your bottom line. Mm. But the reality is nobody does it. Nobody takes action. Yeah. And so it's either people who are looking at this in their mid 50s, who it's a catch up and, ooh, you know, gosh, really catch up. And some people are even w working longer in their in their companies to really provide for this. I, I just interviewed someone, he was 82 years old. He's quite a world specialist in, in a particular area, but um, I don't think he needs to be working 120 hours, but there's a need to work 120 hours. So mm -hmm. the sooner you can put, you know, pedal to the metal, as I always say, and really plan it out. What do we think in the 30s? You will see that it's very different than the 40s because what inflation or uh, monetary policy changes or politics changes or um, the FDA changes yeah. or the pharmaceutical drugs, that, that thing that was $500 may drop or may es escalate. There's um, chemo drugs out there, you know, $25,000 for one treatment, right? We yeah. know that. I think it's important to have people somebody advocating for us and somebody to notify us as these changes take place. Cause you're right. They are happening all the time. Policies are changing just so much change because that's what life is. Life is change. And I love that we have talked a lot about Nancy, the health aspect and retirement and why that needs to be moved to the forefront. Because when we start talking about medical costs mm -hmm. and how we, we don't know, or the unexpected happens and we didn't realize that these things aren't covered, then how do we avoid going to the doctor altogether? And so that is that takes the time to start working on ourselves internally mm -hmm. and learning how to better take care of ourselves. So we don't have to come into that. But when the unexpected happens, then to educate ourselves to know what to expect. Yeah. So I, th I think that um, I, I love that. And so when the unexpected happens, you know what to expect. So I, I love that piece. But I also think that medicine is fractionalizing in terms of we're moving from medicine that we know as standard care, uh, which is kind of how we've operated since the dawn of time. And now we're looking at more functional medicine, just mm -hmm. to your point of how we can get to the root cause. We're not treating the disease at end stage, but rather we're looking at uh, an ability for someone to analyze our blood analyze our systems, we go in with something, something, and they will say, hmm, all right, let's, let's get down to the root cause here earlier to, to have more of the preventive maintenance versus end stage care. Yeah, absolutely. The preventative maintenance is what I hope that most of us are striving for and yeah. definitely the audience on the Wellness Driven Life Show, I think, are people who are interested in that who tune in. So Nancy, that's awesome. All of the things that you have talked about. Now, I, I want to talk about a little bit, you have brought up the importance of communicating with friends and family and just loved ones that you know, communicating with them. Why is it important to do that and ask for support and assistance for this transition? Yeah. So in my observation, um, things go awry when we don't communicate and it, we, it can go awry in uh, your family. It can go awry in a partnership. Um, so for instance, when I retired, I was very specific to my husband. Look, I'm going to do X and Y. How do you feel about that? And so today, this is a two, two years, seven years down the road, right? He said, Nance, I think you should readjust here and here. So he has a voice in this, but we have this conversation, right? Yeah. Versus, 
Um, we know that divorce rises 50% in and around retirement. Why? Because there's no communication. Hmm. And then the communication, the other time that I think it's really important is that legacy piece. It's that signing of all those financial instruments and making sure if you were in my family and let's say you were my go-to executor on my will and my trust and my power of attorney, I am going to be so clear to you, April, I don't want to be on a ventilator. I don't want this, this, and this. Right. Um, I want to live, we keep circling around with this quality of life. Yeah. If you feel that really there's no hope, and not just from the doctor, but you know me, would mm -hmm. I like to be like this? God forbid it's an accident yeah. or something like that. Because I have heard from so many people who have had the honor of the power of attorney situation, but because it is vague or not really clear or kept up to date, right? So let's say you and I have this conversation 2023, but then I kind of stay silent to 2027. You don't really know what's going on, but I need to be communicating this constantly, maybe, a, maybe an annual uh, family meeting or some kind of conversation. April, we're steady the course or mm, two years, April, you know what? Um, I've had a little slight, like a slight, jar over here, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, because the fights and the insecurity of mm. the family or the person who has to end life or not, or make very dramatic decisions uh, for that person, it's really a burden. And when this becomes so clear, and I was so lucky with my father um, and my mother that it was very clear to me what they wanted. Yeah. Um, and, and, but I've been in situations where it is not clear and I've been in hospitals where I've been with the patient, but I'm hearing in another room, the priest last rites saying to the patient, you must communicate, you must, or the, 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 the religious person, whomever they were. Um, and then something happens and it's heartbreaking for the family and heartbreaking for those people. And it doesn't have to be this way. And so mm -hmm. that's why I really suggest that there's a conversation um, so and a conversation is active. It's not a passive mm -hmm. It's, it, it's like you and I have been having this podcast. It's, it's a back and forth, you know? Nancy, it makes me think of how the importance of being vulnerable mm. as we start getting older, the importance of that communication piece, but mm -hmm. along with that is opening up. We can't communicate our desires and our wishes and something that we want someone to know or how we want things to go mm -hmm. if we don't open ourselves up and to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I love talking about sharing stories and mm -hmm. when, because that's so much of what we do on this show is mm -hmm. people are sharing their stories. And for whatever reason, standing up on a stage and, and talking to an audience is one of the biggest fears that we have as human beings. And, mm -hmm. but through that sharing of the stories, the sooner that we can become comfortable with, familiar with, there's such an empowerment there. And it does open us up to be able to communicate more clearly with others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Because really, at the end of the day, it's leaving for the, that person that is leaving this world, I believe it's leaving a legacy yeah. and that that family understands that that's the right, that you really are speaking, even though you are not speaking because you've, you've been very clear with intention, April, I want it to go this way or that way, right? So um, 
Yeah, it's 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 a it's uh, it's interesting. Some families really um, recently, I've, I've I've heard of stories where they'll interview the grandparents because they want to know their stories. What what are those stories of World War II and your first yeah. job and how did you meet Granddad and you know all of this and that's so beautiful. But there's yeah. many many generations that go by that I I think wow. I had an opportunity, but I didn't ask that question, right? I didn't ask it. Yeah. And we do live in a very fun day and age to where we can we can access or bottle up that content, right? Because we can record it and then keep it forever and ever. And to be able to share that with the world, that's such a powerful thing that we have access to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think of as we are on the topic of retirement, and this is a little further on in the journey, and we are talking about that, you know, when we come to an end of life, you know, we have all of these stages and we're, we're ending the, the workforce, we're moving into this other stage of now we get to explore a little bit, maybe we get to do the things, all the things that we have dreamed of doing and traveling and doing that puzzle that I've put off for all of these years, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the little things, right? But they bring us joy. And then moving into, as we start to slow down and, you know, we're, we're moving into going into that end of life phase that we all come to. And it, it reminds me so much about, we took care of my grandmother and Mm -hmm. we had at one point, four generations of women in the same household. Wow. But it was such an incredible and beautiful experience for myself, my mom, my three daughters who were able to share that time, those years and that experience together and helping her along that time. I was fortunate enough to be with her. I was the only one with her when she passed, Mm. but she had a great effect on all of us. And it was just a incredible experience. Um, if people are able to do that and care for their loved ones, I encourage it. And I encourage it for people who have children, for them to be able to share that experience, know what it's like to be with their elderly family members and to care for them, to uh-huh. know what that experience is, you know, and how, Sometimes the memory isn't what they want. And, but there's a lot of funny and joyful times in that, you know, if you just take it lightly and you're like, grandma, you just said that, or, you know, what have you, you just spilled the salt all over everyone's food. You know, (laughs) it's, I wish we would have recorded some of the times that we had together. It would have been Mm -hmm. pretty funny. Yeah, that was, that was so beautiful that you're sharing that, but but I really believe that she's, you know, just in the skies and that your children will be able to reach her, you know, and you will too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm firm believer uh, that they're always with us mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. my grandmother, she, she was quite the, the powerful one when she passed. I mean, the clock stopped, the, this, that, and that happened. Wow. And it was quite profound uh, how, but I think that our loved ones do that to let us know that they're okay. To let us know Mm -hmm. that there is something beyond the realm, you know, that, Mm -hmm. that they have passed on and I'm here. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I haven't gone away yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful story. So so great. Happy that you could share that and had that experience for your family too. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I truly do, do recommend if people are able to and have the capacity to be able to, and it's not easy, of course, Nancy, and you know that it is not easy to be able to care for someone when they're at that time period mm-hmm. in their life, they're moving towards the end. Uh, there was a lot of crying moments for me because I wasn't exactly educated in how to you know, work with somebody in those states and and help them in that. So it was very frustrating. You know, so I, 
I, I maybe recommend that too, to, to kind of learn a little bit on how to care for someone, but it, I wouldn't take it back for anything. We were able to have that time with her and we wouldn't have otherwise. And I wouldn't take that back for anything. And I know that my daughters and my mom wouldn't either. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a beautiful family memory. And um, I, I think there is a, quite a push to, I don't want to say the word keep, but that's all I can think of to, to keep the residents in the home versus more the nursing homes um, and, de and depending COVID on the skill level. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. COVID really made that push a reality because mm -hmm. we had to, it was a force to shift in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not easy, but you know, the nice thing is there is help. You don't have to do it all alone. Again, you know, you can take classes to make it easier for yourself to learn w what things to do best to navigate that. And also when, when they're really towards that end of life, you, you do the assisted, uh, you do the assistance at home. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's options. There's a lot of options where people can be empowered to be able to do that and have that experience. Yeah. I love that word empowered. Yeah. It's, it's to hold, to hold of your own, the way you want to live your life um, yeah. or, or in terms of the family, how they want to live their life um, to appreciate um, the family unit. And, well, and think about how you want to, yeah. How you want to go, how you want to spend the rest of your time. Do you want to mm -hmm. spend it with people you don't know? And it may be a community, but it's still, it, it's not your family. Uh, or do you want to feel more secure and embraced and loved by, by people who have known you forever? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's definitely a choice. And that's not to say that there's not incredible establishments out there. My, my mother has been a geriatric nurse forever. And wow. so I, I definitely grew up in that area where I, I, I grew up with it. I saw it and, and she has so much experience with being with people towards the end of their journey. And so, but we chose to, as a family, have grandma at home. Well, isn't that fortunate for your family that your your mother was able to uh, transform her in incredible knowledge into her home for the sake of the beauty of the family? So that's it's a beautiful experience. Thank you. Well, Nancy, it's been awesome to have you on the Wellness Driven Life Show. I love that we have brought up this topic. It's something that we don't talk about enough. And so that's really, really cool that this is your passion. You definitely saw things that needed to be addressed as you were venturing into the thought on your own. You know, it's like, what does this look like? But there's so many issues with it. And how do we disrupt mm -hmm. those thoughts around retirement? And you have talked about so many different ways and tips and tricks on how to think differently as we go into that direction. Nancy, is there anything else that you want to share with us today? Uh, well, one, thank you so much for having me, April, and on this beautiful podcast, and also to thank the audience if they're listening live or in the recording, that I encourage everyone that everyone will have a beautiful retirement, but most importantly, that you have a choice uh, of your life and I encourage people to define it, to really envision it, think about it, plan it very specifically with uh, tremendous clarity and intention, and then go live your life. And remember, just because you've set this path doesn't mean that you won't derail or you'll fall off and, and do something, or maybe you decide to jump lanes. But that is all life, as April said earlier, that there's constant change. And that's the beauty as a human. We can constantly change to up-level our uh, lives. So I wish you the most beautiful retirement if you are in and around that age or if you're thinking about it, you know, when you're in your 20s and 30s and 40s, um, that the ride's going to be fabulous when you get there. Yes. 
Awesome. And the good news is, is you can extend it for as long as you choose to, because we're living longer. (laughs) We are. (laughs) Oh, thank you, Nancy. It's been awesome. I want to make sure that our audience knows how to reach you for those who are watching the replays, or if you're tuning in uh, with one of our podcasts and you're listening in. So www.envisionhealthyretirement.com. Nancy has an awesome website. You can reach her there. Also, her social media links are going to be left in the description below. So again, that is www.envisionhealthyretirement.com. All right. Well, that's all for now. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Wellness Driven Life Show, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Goodbye, Nancy. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.